here in Skamania County, Washington, world famous for its Bigfoot and Sasquatch sightings and legends. We've been driving around since around midnight trying to find this particular location. Uh, right now it's about 3.30 in the morning. We have a Sasquatch call, or what is believed to be a Sasquatch call, that we're going to sound it out here into the woods tonight and see if we get anything, any response or any sort of manifestations. So we're gonna play that now. Bigfoot real? Well, I guess I guess it depends on what you mean by real. Uh, real in the sense that the people that have experienced Bigfoot are telling the truth. Absolutely no doubt about it. Real in the sense that it's a an unknown animal or creature, or humanoid, yet to be discovered. No, no. Story is far deeper than that. Even in the 21st century, the endless sprawling woodlands of North America remain a formidable wilderness. Contrary to the assumptions of many people today, not only are there still vast, unknown regions within the immense, forested landscape spanning the USA and Canada, which stretch all the way from Northern California and into the deep regions of the Arctic Circle. But also, most of this landscape is still directly unknown to human explorers. No human has actually set foot within a surprisingly large percentage of this woodland environment. Remarkably, and more surprisingly, within the populated regions of the US and Canadian Pacific Seaboard, vast tracts of woodlands remain little explored or are still uncharted territories even to this day. This is a mysterious realm left over from the ancient past to remind the modern humans who live and move along its margins that the ancient forested landscape of the North American continent remains largely intact while keeping its darkest secrets to itself alone. Yet, even so, these secrets can find themselves coming into close and profound contact with unsuspecting modern humans. Humanity's relationship with the untamed woodlands has long been a complicated and intense affair. The wild forests of this world was not a landscape in which humans were inclined towards coexisting with for much of our history. From the earliest times, the dangers of the forest haunted the human psychic landscape in which the unknown sounds, shapes, and mysterious happenings within the woods, especially after darkness, came to be reimagined within mythology and legend. The untamed woods were also extremely dangerous for humans to set foot into for most of our history. Literally everything within a wild woodland intends to consume the unwary and even wary traveler who finds themselves trapped among the endless demarcation lines of trees and undergrowth. The forest floor itself is the ultimate domain of death where microbes and bacteria are the final arbitrators of any creature or person who has fallen down never to get up again. From skin, flesh, and right down to bone and bone marrow, the carcasses of the largest deer or bear can vanish in a matter of hours. 
The efficiency of the woodland scavengers is so ruthlessly precise that almost instantly nothing remains of what once was. Hence why people who vanish into these wild woodlands are generally never found. Any hunter who has spent decades within such forests will tell you that they rarely, if ever, have come across the bones of a large animal. This is one of the most important and significant clues into any potential search for proving the existence of Sasquatch. The physical evidence is essentially pointless, because if it existed, realistically speaking, it could almost never be found. Not only is the quest for discovering bones or other parts of a Sasquatch body a futile pursuit, but it also manifests a sense of frustration within so-called Bigfoot researchers, where even the most implausible and absurd material evidence of this alleged humanoid creature is presented, and in many cases has been clearly faked. With the proliferation of modern technology such as trail cams, there should be thousands of Sasquatch photos at this point. Yet, among the now millions of photos taken, a fuzzy shape in the distance remains the best photographic evidence for the proof of the existence of this creature. In other words, obtaining a trail cam photograph of Bigfoot has been a spectacular failure. When one sits down and objectively examines the vast and entire body of Sasquatch physical evidence, the most honest conclusion for one to arrive at is, there is practically none. Film and videos can easily be faked. Footprints likewise can, and have been proven, to have been faked. Even the much lauded DNA evidence invariably turns out to be bear fur caught on a tree which has been contaminated by the human DNA from the fingers, picking it up, and next thing you know, you have something denoted as inconclusive results coming back from the lab. Which the most zealous Bigfoot researchers are determined to believe is that of some unknown early human or some human-animal hybrid, when in fact it is just a contaminated DNA sample. While there are many sincere and genuine Sasquatch researchers who do their best to apply diligence and integrity to their work, plaster casts of bear prints in distorted mud or melting snow can easily resemble the most well-known attribute of the fabled Bigfoot. However, there is one aspect of the entire Sasquatch phenomenon which presents the clearest and most plausible evidence, and this is the personal eyewitness accounts. There's no doubt that many of these people have been psychologically and even spiritually affected by coming face to face with Sasquatch, which alone provides powerful evidence for the existence of the phenomenon. You can't fake this visceral reaction. Along with the sense of a haunted psyche these people often retain for the rest of their lives. Some of these eyewitnesses present symptoms close to that of post-traumatic stress disorder when recalling the encounters with Sasquatch. These people have looked into the eyes of something that exists beyond man and accepted nature. Their experience is one that is folkloric in nature and not millions of miles from those who have claimed to have experienced alien abduction events, or the vast canon of folklore surrounding entities recorded in the forests, woodlands, and jungles of the entire world. The supernatural and psychic aftershock of coming face to face with Sasquatch, or of hearing its screams emanating from the tree line in the distance, is something these people are unable to forget. For this reason alone, Sasquatch is very real indeed. This is Ranger McCormick speaking. Uh, is this the park ranger? Yes, hello. Yeah, hi. Uh, I, I think I just saw a Bigfoot a Sasquatch. Uh -huh. Where? Where? Uh -huh. he, here. He's here. He's at my house. He's right outside. Okay. He, he looked right at me. Uh, he looked at my soul. Ma'am. Ma'am, are you there? Ma'am, are you still there?
This is not to imply that Sasquatch is merely a figment of people's overactive or infantile imagination. Sasquatch is as real as the people who come face to face with the Sylvian phantom of the North American forest claim it to be. With this approach to the phenomenon in mind, therefore, within this film we are hoping to prove the existence of Sasquatch. Not as an unknown animal or central element within cryptozoology, as the phenomenon has mostly been framed within to this date, but as a woodland folkloric spirit entity not too dissimilar from the myriad of comparable folkloric wild nature spirits from all over the world. From the fairies of the Celtic world, to the trolls of the Nordic regions, to the Vilden folk of the Germanic forests, to the Mahasona of Sri Lanka, and on to the many similar folkloric wild spiritual entities of Asia, there are common supernatural archetypes extending into everywhere on this earth, wherever human imagination has fermented spiritual entities from other dimensions and worlds, and transformed them into this five sense reality. Sasquatch presents us with more evidence of this spiritual elemental resolution of the phenomenon than that of an unknown humanoid or ape-like creature. Sasquatch's total and complete absence from millions of trail cam photos alone reveals this to be the case, yet thousands of people in the USA and Canada have come face to face with Sasquatch. That's because they have experienced just that, a Sasquatch encounter. These people are not lying. It is the nature of the technology used to prove the material reality of Sasquatch which is, for the most part, inadequate for the purpose of proving its existence. While there is little or no evidence of the material flesh and blood Sasquatch in terms of it being an unknown species of human or woodland ape, there is endless evidence of the supernatural or interdimensional Sasquatch to be found within personal testimonies and eyewitness accounts. While many people may find this approach to the topic somewhat disappointing, in actuality, it regenerates the archetype of Sasquatch into a more powerful and precious psychic monument of man's relationship to the wild regions of North America. The landscape of trees, soil, minerals, and wildlife become embedded within a powerful sense of mystical reverence which the Native Americans have applied to these environments for thousands of years. Sasquatch can be then viewed as something of a catalyst between the material forests and the mystical woodland realms of the unknown. The irony of all this being, we are much more likely to encounter a Sasquatch if we cast off this notion of the phenomenon being a zoological expedition, and instead, turn our efforts towards that of a paranormal investigation. Sasquatch type entities are also not exclusively associated with the woodlands of the north. In the Malayan jungle, for instance, you have the Orang Dalam, which translates as the interior man. Again, the descriptions matched out of Sasquatch. Hairy, tall, and again, large footprints. What's interesting about the term, the Orang Dalam, is that it translates literally as the interior man and this can be seen in two senses one as the interior of the forest or the jungle or two as the interior world of the subconscious showing that indeed such archetypes are universal and found everywhere asia remains a fertile location for the proliferation and belief in sasquatch like entities so much so that since the late 1950s, the Chinese Communist government has funded numerous expeditions into the mythologically saturated Shanongjia Forest, which is located within a remote, vast region of Hubei province, attempting to locate a creature known as Yeren. Documented sightings of the entity have been recorded as far back as the 3rd century BC, and have continued to the present. In recent decades, the ongoing research program on the Trail of Yaren, with the hopes of capturing the Yaren on film or even a live specimen, has become formally titled as the Committee for the Search for Strange and Rare Creatures. The committee is composed mainly of scientists who, thus far, have had to content themselves with collecting possible evidence and artifacts as well as taking records of eyewitness accounts. Within their possession, the committee also has what is believed to be a plaster casting of a large footprint, indicating that the Yaren could weigh up to 600 pounds, assuming the footprint is legitimate. 
However, the authenticity of this plaster cast being that of a Yaren is thrown further into doubt by the virtue of this particular artifact being the only one of its kind within the committee's possession. Despite major expeditions having been launched in 1977, 1980, and 1994, utilizing serious funding from the Chinese Academy of Sciences, along with the latest available scientific instruments at the disposal, almost no physical evidence has been uncovered to suggest the existence of the Yaren. Yet folk belief in the Yaren is as strong as ever. Sightings of the creature continue unabated. Even many of the expedition scientists have claimed to have heard its screams in the Shanongia forest at night, and the experience has left a profound effect upon them. Also within Asia can be found Pakistan's Barmaranu, translating as the Big Hairy One. This local version of Sasquatch is distinctive by the deep guttural short screams it fills the forest with during the night while striking terror onto all who hear it. Again, despite expeditions from France and Spain attempting to locate the Barmaranu, no material evidence has been procured. Along with the universality of Sasquatch-like entities worldwide, the same universality of researchers being unable to gather sizable or plausible material evidence for the existence of these creatures, beyond that of a few inconclusive hairs, or something that may or well be a footprint now and again, remains the sum total of thousands of researchers working all over the world and still finding very little in the way of serious or plausible evidence. Not surprisingly, this leads to some individual faking such evidence. This brings up the question is, why do people fake Sasquatch and Bigfoot encounters? I think it comes into two categories. People who are so desperate to believe, much the same way as certain religious people are so desperate to believe in their fate by faking stigmata and so on, they will fake the Sasquatch encounter. And hoaxers who are doing it for fun. The most famous of all the Bigfoot Sasquatch alleged pieces of film evidence remains the well-known Patterson-Gimlin film, which was shot in 1967 at Del Norte County inside the Six Rivers National Forest in Northern California, and to this day is still considered by many to be an actual film of the elusive creature. The short piece of film, recorded at a known location within the Six Rivers Forest, was taken by Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin. Patterson, who died in 1972, went to his grave maintaining that what appears on the film was an actual, real creature. While Bob Gimlin has always maintained that he was never part of any hoax. Roger Patterson himself was an ardent believer in Bigfoot, and spent much of the early 1960s talking with people who had come face to face with the entity. He had even written a book about America's abominable snowman a year before the famous film was taken. Patterson was in no doubt that the creature existed, and had even took trips to Hollywood studios in an attempt to raise interest in the possible production of a feature-length movie documentary on Sasquatch. At one point, he even managed to raise some cash from investors for his Sasquatch film. Patterson, along with prospective Hollywood business partner Jerry Lee Merritt, suspiciously as it has to be said, also copyrighted and trademarked the term Bigfoot clearly demonstrating that he had a personal business interest in delivering a tangible piece of evidence which proved his Bigfoot existed before both himself and Bob Gimlin set out on their way to Six Rivers National Forest determined to get any kind of Bigfoot proof they could on camera. Regardless of Patterson's interests to and fro with Hollywood Studios, leading up to the recording of the famous film, the numerous inconsistencies in both him and Bob Gimlin's testimonies and couple all this together with a near messianic personal need to prove the existence of Bigfoot, while having the resources and means to achieve this, right down to possibly even a costume which could have been easily obtained from a Hollywood studio, the most damning aspect of the 1967 film is that the Sasquatch shown looks and behaves like an ape. 
it bears more of a resemblance to an African gorilla than how previous and many eyewitness accounts have described the appearance and body movements of Sasquatch. Almost no one offering a credible account of their own Sasquatch encounters, prior to the 1967 Patterson-Gimlin film, compared Sasquatch to an ape-like creature. Most plausible and sincere eyewitnesses stated that Sasquatch was more akin to a tall, upright, walking, hairy human, and this is also keeping with reports of so-called wild men sightings the world over. Since the mid-1990s, stories have circulated, although tempting to believe, however still remain unproven, was that Hollywood prosthetic makeup expert John Chambers, known worldwide for his work on the Planet of the Apes film franchise, was the individual who supplied Roger Patterson with the costume, which in turn became the famous Bigfoot in the 1967 Six Rivers National Forest film. Not only was Chambers known to have made at least one Bigfoot costume, which he kept in his garage and not on the movie studio set, but he was also directly involved in a famous hoax of the time known as the Minnesota Iceman, which was a traveling fairground and sideshow exhibit of the late 1960s, early 1970s. John Chambers' depiction of Sasquatch and the Minnesota Iceman was of large ape-like creatures, more so than hairy unknown humanoids. Native Americans have been even more specific in their description of Sasquatch, in that the entity's movements are reported as being far more graceful and almost slow motion in terms of how they move, with many reports alluding to the feminine aspect of the creature. Sasquatch is ghostly and almost ethereal and not at all ape-like within both Native American and the most plausible sightings and reports of backpackers, forestry workers, and others who ventured into Sasquatch's realm. Sasquatch can suddenly appear or vanish, and is often accompanied by orbs of light and even UFO sightings. Sasquatch encounters are often like a show or a performance with the entity being the main event. This also includes the eyewitnesses undergoing lost time and even reporting spiritual experiences during such events, especially if they looked into Sasquatch's eyes. Yet the description is never of a grunting and slumbering ape-like creature dragging itself through the undergrowth. Sasquatch is reported to walk with a sense of confident grace and poise. So much so, that within some Pacific Northwest tribal communities, Sasquatch is nearly exclusively considered to be female. How remarkably similar this is with the ancient European stories of the Wild Woman of the Deep Forest, known in the Germanic world as the Wildenbichen, and to which a more elemental or fairy-like nature is applied, rather than that of a woodland monkey or gorilla. Added to this, only certain types of people are said to even be capable of seeing the Vilden Vision, something which Native Americans also believe about Sasquatch. Adding to its more likely status of an interdimensional entity, rather than that of a flesh and blood, yet to be discovered American ape or proto-humanoid ancestor. While it is only too easy to come to the conclusion that Roger Patterson was a scammer with a prosthetic costume in collusion with some Hollywood collaborators, it would be only too unfair and misleading to state that that was the full story. Patterson was almost certainly scammed himself by the same cabal he colluded with in Hollywood in order to bring his Sasquatch viewpoint to the world. There was absolutely no doubt that Roger Patterson was a true believer in the Sasquatch story and his convictions in terms of bringing the story to the world were sincere. What illustrates this is the concept of Bigfoot consciousness in terms of large footprints being somehow indicative of the entire story. Remember, it was Roger Patterson's contact with his Hollywood associates that had him copywriting the term Bigfoot. And every photograph that appeared of him in the media, either him or Bob Gimlin, were holding in their hands plaster casts of a large foot. Bigfoot 
and the concept of Sasquatch being associated with large footprints became almost something akin to the arches and McDonald's as a defining symbol of the phenomena when in reality prior to the 1960s the Bigfoot aspect of Bigfoot was hardly considered to Native Americans and to early American settlers and Canadian settlers it was simply Sasquatch or in the case of Roger Patterson before he came into contact with his Hollywood associates the American version of the abominable snowman this perhaps goes a long way to explaining why Roger Patterson not long before he died tragically at a young age of cancer stated that he wished he'd never got involved in the whole Bigfoot project Roger Patterson knew deep down inside that his own genuine research into Sasquatch had been stolen and co-opted and marketed as a corporate entity known as Bigfoot and to this day people still associate the entire phenomena with finding footprints and this is the great tragedy of Roger Patterson they took his Sasquatch from him and gave them the corporate Bigfoot and from that point on the concept was transformed into that of a primordial ape or an American orangutan a very similar situation as what took place when UFOs were automatically declared alien spacecraft and all other possibilities were discounted and ignored Amania County became a hotbed of Sasquatch sightings in the late 1960s and early 1970s. In March 1969, Don Cox of Washougal was driving on Highway 14 about one mile east of Beacon Rock when he saw a dark colored creature with a face like an ape crossing the road in front of him. It was 8 to 10 feet tall. He ran like a man and was covered with fuzzy fur. I was headed toward Hamilton Island on the Columbia River to do some salmon fishing and had just come out of a fog bank that had caused me to slow my car down when I saw what at first appeared to be a tree leaning toward the middle of the road. I saw this fur-covered human form with a face like an ape. He ran across the road in front of my car and leaped up a 40-degree bank and disappeared into the woods. The Skamania County Sheriff's Office investigated the sighting and found a smeared track on the bank. The print was not made by a deer or elk, and a bear would not run that far on its hind legs, the investigating officer said. On September 15, 1969, two tracks were discovered at the Miles Stevenson Lodging Operation on Stevenson Ridge, five miles north of Stevenson. The tracks measured 15 and a half inches long and 9 inches wide. A plaster cast was made of the prints by the Skamania County Sheriff's Office. They were described by then Sheriff Bill Klosner as the clearest track of the many discovered in Skamania County. Legends and Theories There are many different legends and theories about Bigfoot. The Thlinget Indians in southeast Alaska call him Kushtaka. They believe that in the 1700s, the white men drove the Indian males into the woods. There, as the legend goes, the Indians mated with the land otter to create the Kushtaka. Jim Frost of Stevenson, who lived in Alaska for 20 years, said the modern Thlinget Indians still believe the legend. They pass the stories down from generation to generation. They firmly believe in this. Scientific theories suggest that the creature is an earlier form of man that never evolved or that is descended from ancestral orangutans. Whether legend or scientific theory prevails, the Sasquatch remains a mystery. One of the most moving and telling aspects of people purporting or claiming to have had Sasquatch encounters is how they remark about when they made eye contact that they were looking into a very deep soul that they were not looking into the eyes of an animal you hear the story of many hunters who picked up a rifle ready to shoot it and suddenly realized that they were looking at a person and not an animal this is a profoundly deep psychological and almost Jungian aspect into the experience 
The assumption that Sasquatch must be some rare or yet to be discovered species of ape or gorilla eventually generated something of a distasteful bloodlust among a certain faction of researchers who determined that only by shooting and killing a Sasquatch would the argument surrounding its possible existence be settled once and for all. Sasquatch's remarkable tenacity in avoiding every trail cam in North America is equaled only by the entity's ability to avoid being shot by the millions of hunters who stalk the North American wilderness year after year. Right up to the present, with their powerful ballistics and infrared night vision detection systems, Sasquatch has proven itself to be the ultimate survivor in this respect. Along with this, Sasquatch has also managed to avoid ending up as roadkill, despite the proliferation of major roads and highways intertwining and cutting through the hearts of Sasquatch country. Yet there are numerous sightings reported of Sasquatch standing at the side of highways, or being caught as a ghostly specter darting in front of the headlights of a speeding car. To date, not a single Sasquatch corpse has been seen or picked up from the side of any road in either the USA or Canada. This frustration, derived from a lack of an actual Sasquatch body, has had researchers such as Dr. Grover S. Krantz, who was literally possessed by the concept of Sasquatch being an American ape, proposed the almost evangelical crusade of killing a Sasquatch specimen at any cost and putting it on public display, including major financial incentives being offered for the body of a Sasquatch. Krantz was a professional anthropologist who came to believe that Sasquatch was an actual creature, devoting most of his academic life to proving its existence. Krantz, to his credit, repopularized the term Sasquatch rather than Bigfoot in the post-Roger Patterson era. In January 1985, Krantz even tried to formally remove the term Bigfoot by presenting a paper at the meeting of the International Society of Cryptozoology held in Sussex, England, instead proposing that the ape man of North America be officially termed as Giantopithecus Black Eye. His academic background also prevented Dr. Grover S. Krantz from any other consideration that the mysterious and elusive creature might be in fact anything other than an unknown species of ape or surviving early proto-human ancestor. Krantz's belief in Sasquatch's existence not surprisingly alienated him from his academic peers, and this became a source of endless frustration for him. Again, a few inconclusive plaster casts of alleged Sasquatch footprints was about the sum total of actual evidence he accumulated. This may have given rise to his bizarre call for a full military assault into Sasquatch country in order to bag a body at any cost. After a life of attempting to find his missing Giantopithecus black eye, Dr. Grover S. Krantz died in 2002 leaving a sizable body of work on how to hunt for ape men in the North American wilderness. His diligence as a scientist was clearly flawless. However, he was looking for something beyond the material realms using material methodologies. Ironically, it was Dr. Grover S. Krantz who eventually became a public specimen himself, when in 2003, his skeleton was put on display at Smithsonian's National Museum of Natural History, alongside the bones of his pet dogs. An eventual outcome to his life's work, which is perhaps best left to poets and satirists to deal with. Despite the lack of an actual Sasquatch body, over the decades numerous people have come forward to claim they have indeed shot a Sasquatch, in some cases at point-blank range, and this had no effect upon the target. In 1961, a group of teens in Oregon, supported by eyewitnesses, stumbled upon a Sasquatch, one of these teens was carrying a 12-gauge shotgun and blasted directly into Sasquatch's chest. Having no effect, to the teen's amazement, Sasquatch turned around and dissolved itself back into the forest, as if nothing had happened. There is another phenomenon surrounding Sasquatch's relationship and interaction with hunters, and that is the effect of making direct eye contact has had upon many of these seasoned and hardened outdoorsmen. Just as they were about to pull the trigger, they described staring into Sasquatch's eyes having a profound, almost religious effect upon them, as if the creature were looking into their very souls. Many of these people who have gazed into the eyes of Sasquatch were never the same again. Sasquatch would appear constantly in their dreams, to the point whereby they felt a strong compulsion, for the rest of their lives, to return to the locations of the sighting, in the hope of seeking resolution to what they actually experienced and why it affected them so deeply, something also common with alleged alien abduction stories. 
When Sasquatch became marketed as Bigfoot, it entered the world of being big game for hunters. However, many of these trigger-happy individuals got more than a corpse or a pelt of fur when they looked into the eyes of Sasquatch. While those who did pull the trigger saw the bullets and shotgun pellets pass straight through the creature with no effect. How can you shoot a phantasm of the woodlands any more than one can shoot a banshee, shadow person, or ghost? If the target is not fully within this earthly domain, and thereby subject to the material laws of nature and the natural world, then one simply can't hunt the non-material. Within European folklore itself, the concept of the wild man or the beast man who lives in the wilderness, not one necessarily of a tangible creature. The beast man is seen in the sense of being a supernatural creature, much like the unicorn in that it migrates or moves between different states of reality, between this world and the other world. Therefore, searching for the wild beast man of the European woodlands be it Celtic, be it Nordic, be it Teutonic, is seen as futile as the beast man will appear unexpectedly and any human being encountering it will encounter these beast men by accident. It's never planned, they're not hunted, they're not sought out, simply because like the fairies they exist between different realms of reality, between this world and the other world, the unseen world of the fairies of the pixies, of the elves. This is where the beast man lives. Occasionally, he shows up within this reality. This was another surprise, though not, not unexpected in terms of the connection between quartz and paranormal phenomena, was that when we overlaid a map of the predominant Bigfoot sightings in North America, they were also in the regions rich in quartz. Now this is important because quartz is used in ancient megaliths and was often seen as a stone, as a crystal that opened up portals between different realms of experience. Therefore, it would make perfect sense that a fleeting and mysterious creature such as Sasquatch would manifest in areas high in quartz. Also, areas high in quartz all over the world are generally associated with things such as orbs, lights, and the UFO phenomena. Things also connected to the Sasquatch experience. Quartz has long been associated with having magical and supernatural properties. In ancient Europe, for example, quartz and stones pronounced with quartz seams running through them were purposefully used in the construction of stone circles, dolmens, and all other manner of Neolithic and Bronze Age ceremonial and ritual sites. Quartz was seen as a means for the spirit world and for this world to interact with one another. In much the same way, quartz crystals are used in radio tuners in order to collect signals otherwise undetected by the human ear. As a result, it was believed that quartz somehow opened up human perception to the spirit world. In some Irish and Scandinavian ancient sites, cup and ring carvings were viewed as literal portals to and from the spirit world. Areas rich in quartz are also known to produce localized paranormal phenomenon. Loch Ness in Scotland and Lake Champlain in upstate New York, Vermont with their famous lake monsters, for example. Then it is hardly of any surprise that Sasquatch sightings are generally more prevalent in mountains and hilly regions which are also high in levels of quartz. Even in some regions of North America not particularly known for Sasquatch sightings, such as Pennsylvania and Vermont, locations associated with manifestations of all manner of paranormal happenings, including occasional Sasquatch reports. 
Although by far the epicenter of Bigfoot activity and sightings in North America is the western regions from Yukon down to California. Again, in mostly mountainous and forested environments with large quartz deposits. One such location is Amador in Calaveras counties in California, which are known to be some of the most high-quality quartz-laden landscapes in the world, particularly in the Mokalumni Hill area. Yet again, the region is well known for its Sasquatch sightings, mainly in and around the foothills of the Sierra Nevada mountains. The Stanislaus National Forest in the Sierra Nevada mountains being perhaps the most southerly domain of Sasquatch frequent sightings, with reports of the entity mainly taking place high in the mountains where the largest deposits of quartz are also found. Is there indeed something about the nature of quartz that alters human consciousness, allowing one to see into other dimensions and worlds, and by extension also allowing Sasquatch to cross over from its own hidden domain and into this material reality? Certainly within many Native American tribes, quartz was considered to have great healing and visionary power. Such ideas are common within the fairy folklore of Europe, and this is why quartz became so central to both European paganism and the spiritual traditions of the Old World. Quartz being seen as something of a portal from which the human and spirit world might pass and interact. These are, these are something that, that live in the same interdimensionality as, as the fairy folk and as the uh, elemental beings. They're not, they're not fully in this reality. When we finally got there, it was just like, I, I felt like we were in a separate reality. During my own research into this topic, one of the things I found especially fascinating was that during the height of the spiritualist movement, at the end of the Victorian era and going into the early 20th century, that Bigfoot creatures were reported and appearing at seances. These would be taking place generally in either Europe or North America, and a Sasquatch type creature would manifest slowly out of the immaterial realms and take form. A very well respected actually and well-known medium from the period a polish medium by the name of franek kluski actually materialized one in 1919 to the point where he and the other people were able to communicate with this bigfoot type manifestation in their parlor room through basic and simple innate sign language like pointing and so on. Along with the emotional and psychological encounters given by eyewitnesses who have encountered Sasquatch, close up and face to face, there have also been reports of people having been abducted by Sasquatch. These stories bear a striking similarity to the fairy abduction stories of the Celtic world, as well as that of modern alien abduction reports. The stories contain similar threads which often involve strange lights, loss of consciousness, missing time, and an element of the abducted human being examined or studied by the entity or entities which had abducted them. So how does it come to be that someone encounters a Sasquatch in the forest? Well, in the Celtic world, there's something known as the fairy stray. It's also associated within the UFO phenomena as missing time. This is also a factor within Sasquatch encounters where time has been lost, sped up, or is completely missing. This comes directly from the concept of the fairy stray within the Celtic world in that somebody wandering usually in a forest or in the mountains enters into another reality and encounters the what they call the good folk in Ireland the the fairies and coming out of this world they enter back into this world profoundly changed and time has changed and time is missing from the experience and the rest of their lives they never forget it and this is one of the reasons I absolutely believe that so many people who claim to have had Bigfoot encounters are absolutely telling the truth because they have the same look in their eye and the same sense of bewilderment that people who have had fairy experiences that I've interviewed have also had. They're telling the truth but they find it difficult to encapsulate and to formulate the experience in the language and the vernacular we use within this modern scientific world. So they resort to the concept of they've seen an unknown caveman or an unknown ape. In reality, what they saw was the American fairy experience. That's what they encountered, the fairy stray. All the same manifestations that, that take place with a fairy stray experience take place within the Bigfoot experience, right down to strange lights and even being abducted 
in some cases. In 1924, Albert Ostman, a Canadian lumberjack, was camping at Toba Inlet in British Columbia when in the middle of the night, and still while sleeping inside his sleeping bag, found himself levitating and then hanging off the shoulder of a large, hair-covered entity which carried Ostman through the dense forest for many hours. After having been taken to a remote canyon, he was shocked to find himself in the presence of four Sasquatch creatures staring down at him. After a week, the unharmed Ostman made his escape, even though the Sasquatch had treated him humanely and looked after his welfare by feeding him edible roots. Out of fear of ridicule, Albert Ostman told no one of his experience for over 30 years, when in 1957 he revealed his experience to the public. This was followed by a magistrate attesting to Ostman's character and mental health as being sound, finding no flaw in either his personality or his story. Ostman signed a solemn declaration indicating that his encounter with the Sasquatch group was true under oath and by virtue of the Canadian Evidence Act. Until his dying day, Albert Ostman maintained that he had been abducted by a Sasquatch and everything he described during the week while in their captivity had indeed taken place. How is Albert Ostman's abduction story fundamentally different from, say, that of Travis Walton, Whitley Strieber, or Betty or Barney Hill, and many of the thousands of people who have come forward with alien abduction stories, and for that matter, being dissimilar to the stories of having been taken away with the fairies of the Celtic folklore? The experiences are all the same thing, acted out and particularly connected to the localized environment, being the quartz-laden mountain forest or a Manhattan apartment, and also being connected with the culture in which they occur. Sasquatch is a particular type of archetypal spirit entity of the North American wilderness, specific to its environment and the people who live and go there. However, not all exclusive to North America. When one considered that the wild men of the deep forest stories are a universal folklore staple, the First Nations people of North America have always known this about Sasquatch, and never deviated from the concept of Sasquatch being a spiritual being. Because folklore and native archetypes the world over bear remarkable similarity to one another. More importantly, what do Sasquatch encounters and experiences tell us about ourselves as humans, about our relationship with the natural wild landscape, and the ever-present schism this creates within the psychological core of the humans finding themselves in such places and in the presence of a Sasquatch? If Sasquatch was an exclusively flesh and blood unknown species of animal, or proto-humanoid, then why would it haunt individuals who have come to stare into its eyes, in the same way people who have reported similar disturbances following alien abductions? In both cases, the entities haunting their dreams and nocturnal hours. The same experience is also reported by people involving the Mothman phenomenon of West Virginia and the Ohio Valley. Men in Black episodes have also been reported by Sasquatch eyewitnesses. Yet so many people continue to place all their hopes in vague plaster casts of footprints or trail cam photos that capture nothing to date. Other eyewitnesses report bizarre synchronicities and events as if their connection between Sasquatch even when they didn't directly gaze upon the entity, stayed within them forever. What makes Sasquatch-like entities appear at seances and have even been reported inside UFOs along gray aliens and even small leprechaun-type beings? Yet hunters and most researchers still search the woods for physical evidence and nearly always come up empty-handed. Perhaps they are looking into the wrong places. That being, rather than within the video frame of a trail cam or in the crosshairs of a rifle scope, Sasquatch is found within the archetypal core of ancient folk consciousness as a multidimensional spirit being which migrates between realities, and one which manifests itself within the particular landscape we might find ourselves in, and how indeed this landscape affects us. Sasquatch therefore isn't waiting to be captured. Sasquatch is already held within the depths of our subconscious poles of cognition and waiting to manifest when our souls open the doors of perception a little wider. You do not trap or shoot Sasquatch. Either by accident or design, you invoke Sasquatch. So I don't know about you, but for me, everything leading up to the experience, through it and afterwards, felt like we went through a portal of some sort. Like we were being guided by our intuition the whole time. Barrier or threshold of when it turned from desert it wasn't to the afterlife, it was just to a different... Kind of the capital of, of Sasquatch and Bigfoot sightings. It's like, you know, as, as Thomas has talked about with this, we're, you know, we're not going into a world where there's, you know, big ape-like creatures. 2002, 
in Salisbury Plain where Stonehenge is located. While on manoeuvres a British Army tank driver spotted the creature and reported it as a Sasquatch.